Hi, welcome back. Today we are going to discuss a potential problem of the VCG mechanism. Namely, it sometimes fails to balance the budget. So far we have imposed absolutely no restrictions in, in the transfers. We have allowed them to be positive, negative and to add up to anything. Now, one possibility is that sometimes these transfers could be negative and that poses a problem. It means that in order to run the, the mechanism, uh, we need some extra money and this money has to come from somewhere. These kind of deficits are problematic, so we want to focus on mechanisms that never have a deficit, that is, mechanisms such that the sum of the transfers of all the members of society is always greater or equal than zero. Those mechanisms are called budget balanced. Now, there are different ways to take a mechanism and turn it into a budget balanced mechanism. One possibility is simply to ask all the participants to pay a higher transfer, a fixed transfer so that it doesn't change incentives in any way, and you could think of this extra transfer as, as a tax. So if you can impose taxes and you are willing to do so, fine, that might be a solution, but there might be situations where that's not the case. Uh, in particular, it might be the case that if you raise the taxes too much, then people might not want to play in your game. If you, if you ask the transfers to be very high, people might just walk away and take some, some outside option with, with some utility that would normalize to zero. In order to, to capture that restriction and to impose that restriction in our mechanisms that you cannot charge too many taxes, we're simply going to impose the, uh, the condition that at least on average, the utility that each player receives in expectation um, has to be greater or equal than zero, taking all the transfers and fees into account. This participation constraint uh, sometimes receives the name of individual rationality. When a direct mechanism has the property that all individuals always have no negative utility, according to the outcome of the mechanism, we say that the mechanism is individually rational. So, are the mechanisms that we have studied so far um, individually rational? Are they budget balanced? Let's see. And let us begin with the VCG mechanism. Now, last class, I defined the VCG mechanism in the particular context of an allocation problem. Today, we are going to study more general settings, and for more general settings, we have to modify the definition slightly. I'll remind you that the VCG transfers for allocation problems consisted of two components. The first component was the sum of everybody else's utility uh, evaluated at the optimal allocation, and the second component was a little bit more complicated. Today's class, we don't have to worry about exactly what it was. You can look at yesterday's video. The point of doing so is that when we wrote the utility of the agent as his value minus the transfer he had to pay, uh, this happened to be, ex the, this, this in turn we would, would end up being written as the sum of two components. The first component consisting of the value of player i plus the first component of the VCG transfer would correspond to the total social welfare, um, which is maximized precisely when the individual report truthfully, because the VCG allocation rule always chooses the Pareto efficient uh, allocation. Therefore, having this first, the, this first term helps to align the individual incentives with the social uh, incentives. The second term, the important part of the second term, is that it is independent of the report of person I, and therefore it has absolutely no effect on incentives. The role of this second term is simply to help us balance the budget. If the second term is positive, uh, it will have no effect on incentives, but you can think about it precisely as a tax that is going to help us to have individuals contribute more uh, so that the deficit of the mechanism is going to be, is going to be smaller. Another nice thing about this second term is that the way we chose it for allocation problems, it had a nice interpretation because the VC transfers were equal to the individual contributions to society. And once you're done with this class and you forget about the equations, that's how I want you to remember the VCG mechanism. However, in general settings, uh, this second term, we're going to have to use a slightly different definition. Uh, to define the, the VCG mechanism in general, we're going to have the same first term so that when, when we add it to the utility function of the individuals, we can align individual and social incentives. In contrast, 
the second term it's going to be similar it's going to be defined in a similar spirit but it's not going to be exactly the same now i don't think there's any point in me telling you exactly what the equation of this second term is going to be in contrast i want to tell you what are going to be the, the crucial uh, aspects the first one is that as before it does not depend on, on the report of person I, and therefore it's not going to affect incentives. So how are we going to choose it? Well, we're going to follow two principles. The first thing is that we can think about it as a tax that's going to help us to balance the budget. And then we would like to choose um, the highest possible value because the more taxes we collect, the, the less budget issues that we're going to have. However, we cannot charge any taxes that we want. Because if, if we ask people to pay transfers that are very high, then their utility, once you take uh, transfers into consideration, would become negative and, and uh, we would violate the participation constraint. So we're only going to go as high as, as the participation constraint allows us. So we, it has to be the case that the utility that people obtain from participating in the mechanism is going to be non-negative. With these two ideas in mind, let us try to see how the DCG mechanism would look like in the context of the roommate's problem and whether it's going to be budget balanced um, or, and or individually rational. So let's go back and, and, and remember the roommate's problem. We had two roommates, Gary and Frankie, but those are not the only pairs in society. In order to figure out what the, what the DCG mechanism is, we actually have to also take into account the person who is selling the espresso machine. I am going to call this person Oscar, the owner. And while Oscar is not making any, any choices, the roommates are deciding to buy the TV or not, we need to take into account Oscar's utility to figure out what, what is the efficient outcome. Because if Oscar sells the TV to the roommates, then Oscar cannot sell the TV to anybody else. So we have to take into account that Oscar's opportunity, the cost for selling the TV to the roommates, it's, is equal to the price of the television. So it's equal to $1,000. I'm going to assume that this is common knowledge, so we don't have to worry about Oscar revealing his type. We still only have to worry about the roommates revealing what their valuations are. With these utilities, uh, we're back to the same case as before, that uh, the total utility for society from buying the television, the total value is going to be equal to the sum of the roommates' values minus Gary's opportunity cost. So it's going to be efficient to buy if and only if the sum of the roommates' values is greater than the $1,000 that the television costs. Uh, so adding Oscar to the problem has not changed anything in terms of efficiency. The reason why we're adding Oscar is because it is going to help us to figure out what are um, the VCG transfers for this problem. First, let's consider the situation when it's not efficient for the roommates to buy the machine. In that case, the efficient thing to do is to not buy the machine uh, so everybody's utility from the efficient outcome is equal to zero, which means that the, the first term of the VCG transfers is also equal to zero, and the VCG transfers are just equal to the second term, the one that only depends on uh, my opponent's report. And from now on, I'm going to be calling this term the fixed tax. Now let us look at participation constraints. The utility of person I is going to be equal to, in this case, it's equal to the value from not buying, which is zero, minus the VCG transfer, which is just the tax. For this to be non-negative, it has to be the case that the tax has to be non-positive. So in this case, we cannot collect any, any taxes. Now, notice that, um, that this tax function only depends on my opponent's reports. So for Gary, it only depends on, on, on what Frank is saying, but not on his own report. Now, only from Frankie's report, we cannot know whether the sum of the two types is greater than or equal than, than, than 1,000. So as long as this is possible, it has to be the case that, that the tax is equal to zero. In other words, um, what we have learned is that whenever Frankie's type, Frankie's value is less than 1,000, then the additional tax that Gary has to pay has to be equal to zero. Similarly, Whenever Gary's report is less than a thousand, the the additional tax that Frankie has to pay has to be equal to zero. And uh, finally, when the sum of the two reported values is less than a thousand, then the tax that um, Oscar, the the espresso machine owner, has to pay also has to be less or equal than zero. Okay, 
Let us turn our attention to a different case, to the case where each of the roommates has a value less than 1000, so none of them would like to buy the machine on their own, but the sum of their values is greater than 1000, uh, which means that it is efficient for them to buy the machine and, and, and share it between the two of them. In this case, the efficient action is to actually buy the machine and the VCE transfers are going to have to include the utility that different people obtain from buying the machine. For example, Gary's VCG transfer has to include the $1,000 cost for Oscar um, minus the value that Frankie obtains from buying the machine. Similarly is the case for Frankie and Gary's VCG transfer has to include minus the value of each of the two roommates. Additionally, each of the VCG transfers has to also include uh, the fixed tax that we are charging to each of these three individuals. The next step is to use the participation constraints the same way we did before. First notice that we are in a case where both Frankie's value and Gary's value are less than 1000. Therefore, without knowing both values, it is impossible to determine whether it is efficient to buy the machine or not. Uh, then we are in the previous case where we already established that when, whenever this condition happens, then the additional tax for Frankie and for Gary has to be less or equal to zero, which means that the VCG transfers have to be less or equal to 1000 minus the value of, um, of the other roommate. The case of Oscar the owner is a little bit more complicated. In order to analyze his transfer, we're actually going to have to look at his participation constraint. For that purpose, we can write down his utility, uh, which is equal to his value from selling the machine because it is sufficient to do so, um, minus his VCE transfer, which depends, which is equal to minus the utility of the roommates plus the additional tax. Uh, this whole utility has to be greater or unequal than zero. Solving for the additional tax, this, this is going to happen if and only if the additional tax is less or equal to minus 1000 plus the values of the roommates. So we can substitute with this inequality into the VCG transfer. The owner's VC transfer is equal to minus the sum of the value of the roommates plus the additional tax. Substituting with our inequality, uh, we end up with this expression in which the values of the roommates cancel out and we end up with the inequality saying that the VC transfer is less or equal to negative $1,000, which means that we have to at least pay the owner of the machine $1,000, which makes perfect sense given that um, that is his opportunity cost. Finally, now that we have an upper bound for each of the transfers, we can add this up together. Uh, the minus 1000 will cancel with the 1000, and we will see that the sum of the transfers is less or equal than 1000 minus the sum of the values. But because we're in a case where the sum of the values is greater than 1000, then 1000 minus the sum of the values is going to be a negative number, which means that um, in this case, the VCG mechanism is running a deficit. The amount that the roommates are contributing is less than the $1,000 that we have to give to the current owner of the coffee machine. If we want to use a VCG mechanism that satisfies participation constraints, then it will fail to be budget balanced. As we shall see in the next part of this lecture, in those cases, it's impossible to achieve the first best.